Hey everyone, by the end of this video, you will know how to use the map function in Integromat. My name is Dominic Lehnert. Let's get right into it. I'm talking about this function right here. So in Integromat, you basically have two kinds of mappings. So one thing that you will see also in the Integromat documentation is what's called mapping. So this is actually the, the kind of the gray box right here. So you have different variables and you actually map these variables. So when I kind of delete this value here and I then put in a new value, kind of this activity is mapping. So I'm actually mapping certain information into certain fields and telling it what to use. What we are talking about now is the map function. So this is what you see here. And we are specifically going to talk about um, kind of the kinks of the map function, especially if you're using it with JSON and with arrays that you've grouped by previously, because then it works slightly different than what you will find in the documentation. So kind of the, the prime example for the map function is, or what the map function does, first of all, it allows you to pull out information from an array. So what, as an example, if we look at one we've already built, so here we have map, and then first of all, we select the array we want to select information from. So we have the array, this kind of arrays variable here. So we, we map information from here. So this is the name of the array. The information we want is the area name. So we want the area name and we want to get the area name where the area ID, so a different value, matches the key. So these are kind of the basics. And I assume you've understood that. If not, I will link a different video below that I would recommend you to watch first because now we get going to get into the specifics and the kinks of the map function. So the way it would usually work is you would have map, then you have the array name, and then you, by, by basically linking it. So for this, you would, for example, then select the array over here. And then afterwards you use the raw name. So if the raw name is, if you hover over something here, you can see that it says raw. And also, for example, here, if we have an image, no, sorry, if we have here the array, it has a raw name. So if we use the map function, we have to use the raw name for it to work. So if, what you would assume is if, for example, you want to refer to the array, you would actually have to write array instead of clicking it. So you can see like here that it's nice and green. You actually have to write array um, in the back of the map function. So you have to use the raw names. But um, what's, where it differs from that is if you, you want to use um, variables that have previously been passed from JSON, because then you actually have to write the name you see here. So how it works with JSON is that if you, let's get back to our example. Here we have the areas variable. And then if you want to get the area name, so one thing you could try is, okay, let's, well, what's the raw name? Hmm. Every name doesn't have a raw name. That's not good. Then you could try to link it in here, but then you can already see that it, it references a specific element in the array. So it's, in this case, it's the first one, but we want, just want the generic area name and not always the first element. And the way it works with, if you've compiled JSON and you wanna to refer to that, is you actually have to write out the name that you see down here. So it's kind of the combination of the two. It's kind of the raw name, um, but, for JSON, the raw name is the actual name you see here. So you would actually write out area name. So this is how it works for, for JSON. That's the first specific for um, the map function. And the second specific is if you've grouped information before. So you've, you've grouped um, bundles before. And so then you have a key over here. And then you can see that the raw name for the key is underscore underscore IMT key underscore underscore. But that is not what we, you, you want to use if you want to use it in the map function. But if you use it in the map function, this is also an exception where you actually have to pull in the key like so. So you actually click it. And so what you would expect is you, you put this in underscore underscore key underscore underscore. But you actually for this, if you have a key up here that you grouped by previously, that you used to group by previously with, then you actually have to put it in this way instead of using the raw name because this this one has a raw name but you don't actually want to use the raw name so these are two specifics usually if you use the map function usually you want to use the raw name and if you use if you have a json you kind of want to use the raw name but it doesn't say the raw name so you just use the actual name that you passed from the json and as well as if you have grouped by um, if you've used bundles that you've grouped by, then you want to not use the raw name for the key 
uh, that you group by if you want to use that, but you actually want to pull that in. So that is um, two or three specifics about the map function. If you find these videos helpful and you want to help me make these videos, feel free to buy me a coffee below. That helps me stay caffeinated. And also, if you want to discuss specific projects that you have, feel also feel free to buy me a coffee below. That allows me to set aside some time on my calendar and we can sit down and talk about what you're trying to build in Integromat. My name is Dominic Lehnert. Take care and goodbye.